Hey guys, Chris Dick here. Uh, today we are working on part 10 of our MS SQL series of tutorials and uh, I'm starting to look at views of data. Um, so in order to do that we need to understand uh, how these relationships that we created uh, actually interact with each other. And uh, if you recall we created a relationship between our students and addresses. So uh, I'm going to use that as our example here. Um, if I start off with a query, select star from students, all right, I end up with 29 rows. That's what it says here. Okay, I can also look down here and see that I'm on row 29. All right. Now the next one, if I do a select from a star from addresses okay if I run those two queries I'll have 29 rows in students and two rows in addresses well what that tells me now is that uh, there are a lot of students that do not have addresses and some that do right now we can see that uh, if we just look at the data we see that there's a student ID here student ID 1 apparently student ID 1 has two addresses okay so what we need to do is find a way of relating those two because right now from the address table I really don't know who student one is so in other words I'd really have to go back here and, and then take a look at you know who is student one that's not so helpful so I want to create some views of this data and uh, we're going to look at uh, how we're using uh, joins in data and that's that that uh, creates those relationships between that data so if i um if i again do select star from from students okay uh, i'm going to com comment this out by doing k control k then c I am going to do an inner join here is what this is called okay I do an inner join on uh, addresses and I'm doing it doing addresses dot student ID okay equals students okay now I'm going to specify this make this a little bit more specific here okay so we do that all right otherwise it can get the the two columns can get confused it may think it's addresses student id equals other student id so we just make it more specific now if i run this all right it brings up our two rows all right now what we have we do have our first name and last name so it pulled in all the data from the students and all the data from our addresses but what happened to all the the other students well the type of join that we've done will only give us data uh, as it exists uh, from both tables. So it will take the students that have addresses. Okay. If I want to uh, give give uh, a list of all of the students, uh, and e regardless of that if they have addresses or not, uh, then I would use something called a left join. All right. So if I run this. I now see a list of students. Okay, uh, some have uh, addresses, others do not. All right, but the best part of it is I have names. I have all of the information from students, and that allows me to uh, d discern. Okay, how many how many of these people do I actually need to get uh, uh, addresses from? Okay. Um, those are the types of joins that you're going to be using most often in this case. Okay. Now, if I recall, we uh, also added um, some information to our students' courses. Okay. So let's apply this uh, this join here um, to that table. Okay. So once again, I can, you know, because I can have students that, um, you know, are in my list, but are not assigned to courses. So, so if I do students courses, all right, take that. And uh, I, I just, you know, very quickly applied the, uh, the names. OK, 
right? You'll see that I have one student actually assigned to a course, okay? Now, where it gets tricky is that I now need to add in two relationships, okay? Courses. Uh, I have to add courses because I've got the students' names, now I want to get the course names. So I say courses on courses, whoops, equals, sorry, not on, courses dot course ID equals students course, courses dot course ID. Okay? So if I run that, you'll now see that uh, once again, I did an inner join. So uh, that only brings up just the, the, the students that have a course in there. So again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that I show up everybody. Okay. So here I now have a view that shows me uh, the student name. All right. Um, and of course, the information from student courses, which isn't really helpful because it's just numbers and I don't see it. However, if I draw in the course name, I now have uh, all of the, the information. So if I was creating a report, for example, I probably want to be showing this information rather than a bunch of numbers. Okay. Now, we'll add in one more thing because we also have our, uh, our locations. Okay, so we're going to do locations uh, dot uh, location ID equals courses dot location ID. Okay, so if I execute that now, all right, we now have all of the information from locations. So if I go over here, here's my location data. Okay, there's that uh, that room number A three two one. Okay, and once again, I've got the IDs and all the rest, but I don't particularly need it. All right. If we want to uh, eliminate things, because uh, you know, really, we're all all we're after here is getting the information that's really important for uh, for this. So I'm going to pull off some data, and I'm going to I'm going I want the student first name. Okay student last name all right now what i'm also going to do is i'm going to do something a little different here i'm going to call this full name okay and it's a it's an alias column and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull together the student first name and last name okay now i do something called uh, concatenation all right <laughs> Excuse me. So if I pull up this um, this right now the way it is, it's just going to pull up a list of names, first name, last name, and full name. Okay. So this is only this data. When I had the star there, it just said, simply said, "Give me all of my data." It doesn't matter what I'm asking for. Okay. But I'm going to get a little bit more specific here. All right. So I put a comma here, and now I want uh, from addresses. I want to get the uh, let's see we're gonna we're gonna build an address okay so just like we did with full name whoops I made a mistake here there we go I put it in the wrong spot there we are okay I'm gonna create an address and uh, this will just be simply our default way of displaying an address for um, for anything that we do, if, we, if you will, right? So we have a street number, okay, which naturally follows a street name. Put a space between that, all right? We then have addresses dot street name, okay? And we're gonna call this address, okay? All right. So let's um, let's go ahead and run this and see what comes up. Okay. Now something what we're that we're seeing here, I have to understand why I'm getting some issues. Okay. And ah, I didn't add in my addresses. I took it out last time. That's why. Okay. Let's put this back in. Okay. 
we're going to run that one more time here. Now we've got it. So now we have our addresses too. Okay. Now that's going to create um, a, a little bit of an issue. So let's kind of back this out uh, because we we're kind of trying to mix too much into this report. We're only looking at student courses and courses. So I got a little bit ahead of myself here. All right. So we want to get the course name. Take away this information. We don't need that anymore. Okay, course name. All right. We don't really need to change that or anything because there's it's a unique column name for courses. Um, so we can uh, we can ask for it without doing the dot. You know, in student, same thing. We could have just asked for first name and last name. But I wanted to be get a, get a little bit more specific. Okay. Now, the um, the same goes true with what we did with full name here. Is I can, I, you know, rather than saying course name, course code, I may want to have a standard way of of displaying that information and. I like doing it like that because um, I always know that if I see what the data looks like in a very standard format, um, it's easier to read. Okay, we'll call it course title. All right, let's uh, run this now. Okay, and of course I've got this kind of in the backwards way, so I'm going to throw this in here, move this around. Okay, we'll run that one more time just to make it look nice. All right, and we'll throw a dash in there, make it uh, make it look good. Okay. All right. Now the next thing that we want to do is add a location a location name. All right. Good. And there we have it. So right now we have one student, that's me, registered for uh, Data 101, uh, Data Programming, and I'm going to be in room number um, A321. Now you see here it just says name. Well, not very descript, right? So I can actually rename that. So let's call it room number. All right. So when you do use the add predicate, you can uh, you can alter what that table or that column is displaying. So it get, it's getting a little bit more realistic to how I might actually display that information. Okay. Um, now, what I uh, what is a good idea because I don't want to be retyping this formula or this, this script every time I want to pull up this information. So what I want to do now is create something called a view. Okay, and a view allows me to uh, display this data in such a way that um, that uh, I, I can call this view anytime and it will display it the, exactly the way it needs to be displayed. <clears throat> so I'm going to close this because with this here I can I can create that same view pretty easily right um, and it'll maintain all the all the relationships because I know that I've already got them set up right student courses and locations right and you see here all these links there they uh, you know it already knows that those things have a relationship to each other okay so I, um, I, I've already created my formula, so I'm gonna, and, and in fact, this one did it wrong. Let me see here, so it doesn't inner join. So if I run that, it's only going to display just the people with an address, or with, sorry, with a, a course. So it's only gonna sh display uh, one row. Don't want that. <coughs> okay, so we've got our lovely format uh, formula here. We've got our script. Okay, now once I uh, click over, you see it, uh, it, it uh, reorganizes my, uh, my script and sometimes it can be right, sometimes it can be wrong. You want to be cautious and pay attention to what it's, uh, what it's actually doing. Okay, I'm going to widen out some of these columns so we can see what, uh, what it's displaying. If I run that, okay. As you can see, it looks uh, the results look very similar to what we had before. 
Okay. Great. All right, now we're going to save this. Now, there are some naming conventions that you want to adhere to. Uh, I like calling all my views with the, with the word view. And I'm going to call this students courses. Okay. We save that. Now, you might be asking here, what do I do with this now? It looks uh, so far, it looks like it's not going to be so helpful because it's just a view and it doesn't sit there. Well, I can uh, actually use this information. We're going to refresh our views here so we actually see it. I can do this in a few different ways. I can do script um, as a select to, okay, just like this. If I run that, it runs it just the same, okay. If I want to do this as well, select star from, uh, oops, hold on a second, video dot view. Yeah, I like to do this. This is a little easier. Sometimes it doesn't show up in the IntelliSense right away. And Control Shift R should do it. Okay, there we are execute there we have it all right so um and again i could have i could have very easily just done this and the reason it wasn't coming up is because the intellisense hadn't uh, refreshed its cache yet because i just created it it takes a little time to refresh but i can force that refresh by doing Control shift r all right so again it looks like all the all the data is there all right guys uh, that's it for this tutorial. Uh, we'll be moving on to part 11 shortly and um, we'll uh, pick it up soon. Remember to like and share and we'll chat to you soon. Take care guys. Bye.